This tutorial reviews the Dapper study modules in the SKM PowerTools software. Dapper is an acronym for Distribution Analysis for Power Planning, Evaluation, and Reporting. The Dapper study modules include connected, demand, and design load calculations, cable and transformer sizing, panel, MCC, and switchboard load schedules, load flow and voltage drop calculations, impact motor starting evaluation, and traditional short circuit or fault analysis. The demand load analysis module is used for sizing equipment and for planning and documentation of load requirements. It determines the total connected load on each branch circuit, the demand load based on typical load diversity factors, and the design load with safety factors for long continuous loads. The demand load analysis also provides a source load summary that lists the total load by type at the utility source connection. The demand load analysis requires the size and type of each load, the connections of the power system, the system design voltages, and the utility or power source connection. A library of load types with diversity and long continuous load design factors is also used in the calculations. The concept of diversity is best described by example. For this example, we have two parallel branches, each with 10 kVA of receptacle load. The connected load through transformer TX1 is therefore 20 kVA of receptacle load. However, with a demand load library that follows the National Electric Code diversity allowance, where the first 10 kVA of receptacle load is represented at 100%, and the remaining receptacle load is represented at 50 percent, the total demand load through transformer TX1 is only 15 kVA. That counts the first 10 kVA at 100 percent and the second 10 kVA at 50 percent. The demand load study calculates the load fed by each bus separately and applies the demand factors for each load category. The study options for the demand load analysis allow you to include all loads in the calculations or only loads identified as a demand load. Energy audit loads are loads specified with a fixed individual diversity factor rather than referencing the demand load library with multi-level diversity. The study setup also allows you to specify a design factor for the largest motor fed by each bus. The default setting counts the largest motor at 125% and all the remaining motors at 100 percent. The total motor load is automatically calculated at each bus since the largest motor fed from each bus may be different. For motors specified in a motor control center, the load analysis can use the rated size or the National Electric Code full load amp specifications. Since the National Electric Code multi-level diversity factors are intended for use in radial distribution systems, the demand load analysis module can automatically open network loops in the center or can follow a conservative approach by opening each branch in the loop. The demand load report provides a detailed load breakdown fed from each equipment bus. The report includes the total connected, demand, and design load in KVA and amps at the bus and through each branch. A sizing study is typically used for preliminary system design. These preliminary calculations determine the size of cables, raceways, ground wires, and transformers based on the design load supplied by each branch. Sizing calculations require the total design load in each branch and the system design voltages. A library of cables with conduit sizes, the maximum number of parallel conductors for each size, and total ampacity is used to select the cable size. When multiple options meet the criteria, the final selection is based on a minimum conductor cross-sectional area. Duct bank configurations and ambient temperature are used to further derate the cable size selection. A calculation is made to verify that the branch voltage drop is also within acceptable limits. Transformer sizes are selected by comparing the calculated design load with the full load transformer rating available in the library. The study options for the DAPR sizing calculations include a specification of the maximum allowable branch voltage drop, 
and the ability to size feeders directly connected to a transformer relative to the transformer size rather than the design load. You have options to report the calculated size of the cables and transformers without actually updating the existing cable and transformer sizes in the project database. Alternatively, you can report the size of existing equipment or resize the equipment and update the project database. The cable and transformer size report can also be saved in a schedule format suitable for inclusion on CAD drawings. The dapper sizing report lists the feeders into and out of each bus and includes the number of conductors, size of the phase and ground conductors, raceway size, duct bank or installation description, insulation type and class, cable description, and length of run. The sizing report also compares the design load through each cable with the cable ampacity derated for ambient temperature and duct bank installation configurations. The branch voltage drop is calculated and used to size new cables and evaluate existing cables. The transformer sizing report lists each transformer, rated voltage, winding configuration, design load, nominal and full load ratings, and the transformer impedance. A load flow or power flow study calculates the current and power flowing through the electrical system and the resulting power losses and voltage drops. A load flow study is used to size equipment for continuous loads, predict operating voltages, set transformer taps, size and place capacitors, determine system losses, define generator set points, and for what if contingency planning. A load flow study may also be used to evaluate emergency operating conditions, simulate snapshot motor starting, and for black start motor reacceleration studies. The DAPR balanced load flow study assumes a three-phase power system with balanced three-phase loads. A load flow study requires load size and characteristics, system connections, design voltages, transformer sizes and impedance, cable sizes, lengths, and impedance, and utility and generator conditions. Loads are typically represented as either constant KVA, where the power remains constant and the current varies with voltage, constant current, where the current remains constant and the power varies with voltage, or constant impedance, where the current and power vary with voltage. Load flow calculations involve iterative solution methods. There are several different load flow numerical solution methods, including Gauss-Seidel, Newton-Raphson, current injection, and variations of each. Each method has advantages in terms of speed, reliability, and flexibility. Since all solution methods should produce the same result, you need only use a method that is efficient for your system configuration. Another special condition is the representation of generators in a load flow. The most common generator representations are PQ, where the real and reactive power output is fixed, PV, where the real power output is fixed, and the reactive power output range is used to reach a target voltage, and swing bus, which is essentially an infinite power source. The DAPR load flow study setup includes options to include or exclude the source impedance, transformer phase shift, and load tap changing transformer effects. The exact solution method should always be used. However, in extreme overload conditions where a traditional load flow can't converge, the approximate solution converts all loads to constant impedance and provides a solution that will help identify the location of the overload problem. Two popular load flow solution methods are available in DAPR, including current injection and Newton-Raphson. Both methods should provide the same results, however one method may outperform the other for solving marginal systems. For system loading conditions, you can use the total connected load, connected load with individual diversity factors, or the demand and design load results from the load analysis. The DAPR load flow report lists the cumulative voltage drop at each equipment bus, the voltage drop through each branch feeding into and out of the bus, the power flows and losses through each branch, and the branch currents. A load flow calculation may be used to evaluate the transient voltage drop that occurs when a motor is energized. The voltage drop can in turn be used to evaluate the motor torque relative to the load torque. The snapshot impact motor starting calculation provides a good initial estimate and is particularly useful when detailed motor and load data are not available. 
The impact motor starting calculation can also be used to simulate starting on generator sources and to evaluate the effect of reduced voltage starters. Since impact motor starting is essentially a load flow calculation, the same information is required plus motor inrush current, starting power factor, and the equivalent source impedance. For the initial motor starting conditions, the motor is best represented as a constant impedance load. Fault analysis simulates a short circuit condition and is used to evaluate protective device ratings, bus and switchgear ratings, to set protective devices for selective coordination, to estimate arcing fault currents as related to arc flash hazard calculations, and as a basis for safe grounding design. Short circuit calculations require the size, subtransit reactants, and X over R for all induction motors and synchronous machines, the available fault current from the utility, and the network connections. The system design and operating pre-fault voltage, transformer size and impedance, and transformer winding connections are also required. Similarly, cable and transmission line sizes and lengths are needed. Several different short circuit calculation methods exist. The methods primarily differ in how motor and generator contributions are represented. The ANSI C37 standards are designed to select equipment ratings for ANSI rated equipment. The traditional comprehensive method assumes all contributions are continuous with no AC decay. The IEC 60909 standard is followed in many parts of Europe and Asia for land-based systems, and the IEC 61363 standard is designed for offshore applications. Multiple fault calculation methods exist because the dynamic short circuit event is represented with a static snapshot calculation. The interaction of multiple machines decaying at varying rates, parallel and series contributions, dynamic impedance, and DC network decay are difficult to represent in a static calculation. Substantially more information is required to perform a dynamic simulation, which is generally not warranted. The traditional fault analysis in DAPR calculates a symmetrical and asymmetrical fault current, including the initial DC offset and decay. Note that the symmetrical current remains constant, indicating that the AC decay from machine contributions is ignored. In reality, motor and generator contributions will also decay. The percentage of motor and generator contribution relative to the total will determine the accuracy of the traditional calculation method beyond the initial symmetrical and first cycle asymmetrical values. To find upper and lower bounds, including effects of AC decay, you may want to compare results with and without motor contributions. The traditional DAPR fault study calculates three-phase, single-line-to-ground, line-to-line, and double-line-to-ground faults. You can generate a single report that lists the fault current at all bus locations, or you can report faults for selected bus locations. There is an option to include or exclude motor contributions, transformer tap effects, and transformer phase shift. You can also choose to report bus voltages and branch fault currents throughout the network for each fault location. You can report phase currents or sequence currents and can report symmetrical and asymmetrical values. The pre-fault voltage may be set from the load flow calculation, a fixed voltage for each bus, or a no load voltage based on the source voltage and transformer tap settings. You can even choose to include or exclude line capacitance for sensitive earth fault calculations. The DAPR fault report lists the initial symmetrical RMS fault current at each equipment bus, the Thevenin equivalent impedance, and X over R ratio. It provides asymmetrical RMS fault values at 1 half, 2, 3, 5, and 8 cycles, and phase or sequence currents for unbalanced fault conditions. For each fault location, the DAPR traditional fault report lists the voltage at every bus in the network. Branch currents flowing through the network to the fault location are also reported. Load schedules are formatted tables that document individual circuit loads fed by a panel, switchboard, or motor control center. Load schedules require the unit size, quantity, and type of load fed by each circuit, the circuit number, and phase supplying the load, and the size of the overcurrent protection for each circuit. The bus rating, enclosure description, primary protection, and location information for each panel or MCC is also generally included. The DAPR load schedules can be printed directly 
saved as a report file, or exported to CAD in DXF format. There are six standard panel schedule formats, and you can choose to display a variety of schedule, phase, and bus totals at the bottom of each panel. For unbalanced loads, the load schedule can report the largest phase current or an average for all three phases. For motor control center schedules, you can customize the column positions and widths and can report standard feeder and raceway information from the MCC library or report custom feeder and raceway information for each circuit. The switchboard schedule provides two alternative formats. A sample panel schedule is shown. It contains a header with location, enclosure, and primary protection information. It displays the panel ratings and calculated fault current. It lists the panel circuits with the load description, size, quantity, and overcurrent protection. Panel totals are displayed in KVA and amps, and phase totals are displayed in VA and amps. Several note fields are included for additional documentation or instructions. All of the DAPR study modules share the same graphical interface. The general procedure is to sketch a one-line diagram, which typically includes cables, transformers, motors, and non-motor loads. The minimum amount of information required is the voltage, the length of your cables, and the size of the loads. For the DAPR short circuit and load flow studies, you will also need to enter the available fault contribution from the utility. The DAPR sizing study and demand load analysis study can then be run. The DAPR sizing study uses the results from the demand load analysis to size the cables and the transformers. If part of your system is new, and part is existing, you could use the Do Not Size option to protect existing equipment from being resized. Once your cables and transformers are sized to the design loads, you can run the DAPR load flow study to check the voltage drops and system losses, and run the short circuit study to check withstand and interrupting ratings for equipment. After running the studies, you can view the standard reports and view data blocks on the one lines. You can change the system model in the base project or in separate scenarios and continue to rerun the DAPR studies until you've reached a final design. For more detailed instruction on the Power Tools for Windows interface, refer to the PTW overview tutorial. This concludes the DAPR tutorial. For additional information, contact SKM Systems Analysis toll-free at 800-232-6789, visit our website at www.skm.com, or send an email to sales at skm.com.